it's cold, but we're gonna do this. Hello and welcome to today's video. But today we're going to paint a photography backdrop and I am so excited. So let's just get into it. Guys, right, I'm not gonna lie, it's cold. So we're outside painting a backdrop and I will show you my setup. I've got the fabric that I am painting is obviously this one on top. I've just put it down with some pieces of wood so that it doesn't blow away because it is super windy today. But yeah, that's what I'm painting on and this is what I'm working with. I've got some paints to mix to create a brown. Thank you, Hannah. She lent me these. So, and then I've got some cumin, some turmeric and these crushed stones as well. Um, this is what I am working with. So I'm going to do a bit of a mixture of I don't know, I'm gonna see what it looks like using the actual paints and then I'm gonna see what the colors look like using the natural pigments like turmeric and cumin and then the stones as well. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out. I've got a picture in my head, so I don't know how it's gonna go. Let's just, let's just start mixing and start trying to create some paint, I guess. If you want to be part of the live coaching and classes Okay, so I've just tried mixing some paint and what I did is I first went with my crushed stones which I found were not very pigmented at all. Maybe, maybe they won't work very well with backdrops, I'll have to try again. I feel like I need to crush a lot more stones in order to get like a, a strong pigment. So then I threw some cumin in, didn't do much at all. Then I did turmeric and oh my god, it's literally like... bright orange yeah that definitely worked but I'm just gonna try and narrow it down and the reason why it's so watery I just want to say is when you paint in a backdrop your paint does not have to be thick it's so much better if it's watery and then you can just spread it around and you will see as well I always use a sponge to paint my backdrop as it's just so much easier and it creates a really nice texture okay so lots of mixing in order to get a nice color so I have this brown like a muddy brown, yellow, orange, and then like a pale kind of beigey colour. Um, I do like them, I think. I don't know, <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to just go over to the fabric and see what it looks like. And you know, you're practicing so much just to get all of these down. Okay, update guys, this is how it's looking like and I am running low on paint. I keep having to mix more and more and more. Backdrops take up a lot, well, not, not necessarily a lot of paint, but it's like a lot of watered down paint. But yeah, I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. still a lot to get through 
and mainly what I'm using at the moment is the darker shade but I'm thinking before I go all around the outside in the darker I need to do the middle and the lighter so that I don't get stuck and have to lean over if you get what I mean because it's going to be darker here than a bit lighter in the middle so I think I'm going to go in the middle now actually and start bringing it in and making it lighter so yeah let's do that mixing more paint guys I'm working with these these are tiny <laughs> and these but gotta work with what we've got got to i'm not a painter and this is what i get for trying to paint i'm just not a painter i forgot what even makes brown anything makes brown though i think like you know when you used to paint when you were little did anyone else used to paint and then at the end oh my god at the end you just mix all the colours together and end up with like the most disgusting brown and now that disgusting brown is hard to make it's green i made green ah uh, the red the red seems to be acrylic medium that's really I think for when you're using natural pigments to like I'm not even gonna pretend that I know what it's for actually just saw it on a YouTube video Ugh. this brown is the grossest brown I've ever seen white please save me okay I need to remember to pat don't um what's it called don't swipe just pat Wow, um, that was an eventful few hours, but yeah, I did it. Each time, well, it's the second time I painted a backdrop now, and I always learn something every time I do it, and this time, I'm just gonna tell you what I learned. First of all, it takes long. It's like a workout as well. It's like constantly trying to get it to look good. <laughs> and it's hard, I don't know why it's so hard. Green paint like makes everything green so i put a drop of green paint in and it's all green oh my god don't underestimate the power of green i have a lot of respect for people who paint oh my god it is an art form mixing paint and using paint it is just mind-blowing shall i say it's hard it's hard but yeah, anyway, I'm gonna show you the backdrop now, but basically if you want to paint your own backdrop, then it's so much fun, it really is, but you have to make sure that you have time. You have the time to do it, and it's literally starting to rain now. So I need to put it under shelter. So I'm gonna show you super quick. This is what it looks like. I think I'm gonna add to it, make it maybe a bit darker down the sides, Ooh, and get rid of these black bits. Um, but yeah, that is the colour. And to be honest, what do we think? What do we think? I'm gonna insert some video, some videos, some photos at the end of this video um, of what it looks like actually being used. Um, so I'm excited to see those too. <laughs> so let me know what you think. Let me know if they're any good. Let me know if you're gonna paint your own backdrop. That was just, yeah, that was difficult, but we did it and this, I've tidied a little bit, but we still have some aftermath. <laughs> yeah, so I've got to clean that, but now I'm going to put it under a shelter. 